Are you close to a window? If so, then what are you waiting for? Walk over and take a look outside. What do you see? And don't say a window. I already know that. Maybe if it's warm and sunny. If so, what are you doing still watching this? <laughs> Just kidding. Keep watching. I really need this job. Or maybe there's rain or wind or lightning or snow. Whatever you see out of your window right now is all thanks to the weather. And you probably won't be surprised to learn that weather is an important part of physical geography. Before we get too far into the topic, let's talk about the difference between two terms, weather and climate. Sometimes we make the mistake of using these two words to talk about the same thing. It's like how some people think that Instagram filters and photography sills are the same thing. Rachel, they're not. Weather and climate are related, but they are in fact different. Weather refers to temporary short-term conditions that are happening in our atmosphere or in the air around us. For example, maybe today there was a big snowstorm that made the roads icy and it made you crash into a dumpster, which in turn made you three hours late for work. And I'm so sorry it won't happen again. Please don't fire me. But if tomorrow the temperature rises and the sun comes out, well then all that snow quickly turns into puddles. And you won't have to hire a new host for this because it truly won't happen again, I swear. Weather is not my friend. Climate, on the other hand, is long-term in nature. Climate is more than just one weather event or a single warm or cold day. Remember, ladies, if your climate can't commit, he's nothing more than weather. Climate explains the regular expected weather conditions that should happen in a specific area over a long period of time. For instance, lots of places on this earth have distinct seasons. You might have more rain and mild temperatures, in the spring more hot, dry, and sunny days, in the summer and cool autumn days and really cold snowy winters. Is everything gonna change every time I mention it? I already had a bad history with weather. The place where you're located on this planet at this very moment has a kind of weather that is normal for this time of year. And it might not necessarily be the kind of weather that is happening outside this very minute. In just a minute, we will talk about what factors help determine your climate. The study of weather is called meteorology. The study of climate is called climatology. And as you no doubt have already figured out, both are important parts of physical geography. Once again, let's take a look at what our friendly Greek scholars meant when they came up with these terms. We'll start with meteorology. No, it's not the study of meteors from space. The word meteorology comes from meteoron, meaning any phenomenon in the sky. So it's studying the things that happen in the sky. When we say the sky, we're specifically talking about the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the layer of air that covers the whole surface of the earth. Meteorology focuses on understanding and forecasting the weather. And we use the science of meteorology to make pretty good guesses about what the weather will be like. Since we have to live with weather every day, isn't it better when it doesn't take us by surprise? I knew something would happen if I said that. Using various tools, meteorologists forecast when it might rain or snow and whether it will be warm or cold. Meteorologists even include your local weather person, you know, Scientist with a TV presence. Predicting the weather isn't magic, it's science. Meteorologists use some important things to measure our atmosphere and predict our weather. These are temperature, moisture, or humidity, air density, and air pressure. These things each tell us how we can expect both water and air to behave. This is important because that's what weather is water and air behaving in certain ways. Sometimes water and air are on their best behavior. Other times, like when we have natural disasters, the air and water in our atmosphere completely lose control. Yeah, like that. Let's look at temperature first. Temperature tells us whether we're having a hot or cold day. It helps us know whether we should wear a coat or sunscreen. Easy enough, right? Wait, 
those, those two should switch. Heat on the Earth's surface comes from our beautiful shining sun. While the Earth is going around the sun, our planet is slightly tilted on an axis. Because of this, during a certain time of year, the northern part of the Earth is closer to the sun. During the other part of the year, the southern part is closer. Depending on how close a part of the Earth is to the sun will determine how hot or how cold that part gets. Closer to the sun means more solar energy, which means the land, the water, and the inside of your car. Heat up to warmer temperatures. Further from the sun means less solar energy, colder water, colder seats in the car, especially leather. Roads so when you drive your colder car in colder weather, you're more likely to have an accident. I can't make this clear enough, guys. I'm really sorry I was late. I mean, honestly, don't fire me. Temperature has a big effect on the air, on the land, and of course, on the water cycles. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, and snow, ice, and frozen temperatures become part of the weather whenever the temperature drops below that number. As the temperature rises, evaporation of water increases. More water vapor is taken into our atmosphere. Air with a lot of water vapor in it is called humid air, or humidity. Humidity is a measure of moisture in the air. If you've ever been to a hot part of the world with a lot of water, like a rainforest, then you know what humid air is like. Whew, uh, holy smokes, <laughs> that is humidity. In addition to water vapor, there are tons of other tiny molecules and elements in the air all around us. If there are molecules in the air, the air gets heavier and creates more energy because those molecules get all up and crowded and bump into each other. The number of molecules in the air determines the air's density. When the air is more dense, it creates more air pressure. Air pressure is a measure of that energy. When you mix all these things, different temperatures, air densities, and air pressures, you create tons of different weather conditions and combinations. Some are more common, some are more rare, and some are straight up insane. Woo! Yeah. I knew that was coming. Let's start with the normals. I'm gonna keep my umbrella. We've all experienced some form of precipitation. You know, where water in some form falls from the sky. Rain, snow, hail, and sleet are all forms of precipitation. Precipitation happens when enough moisture collects in the clouds. The types of precipitation is determined by the temperature. Wind is another common type of weather Wind can range from a cool, gentle breeze to uh, the kind of wind that rips trees right out of the ground from the roof! Wind happens when temperatures change on the earth, causing a change in the air density, which in turn causes a change in the air pressure. When this process changes more quickly, we get wind. That is because the different places end up with different air pressure. When air pressure gets higher in one area, that extra air energy rushes in to fill other areas in the atmosphere that have lower air pressure. When that happens, the air blows like the wind. Get it? Because it's the wind. Now let's spice things up a bit. Are you as scared as I am? Thunderstorm. Did it make you shiver? Thunderstorms happen when certain types of clouds collect enough water and ice particles. These particles get crowded in the cloud, and you guessed it, they start bumping into each other. Just like how air molecules bumping into one another creates energy and determines our air pressure, these water molecules bumping into one another create an electric charge type of energy. And if you have ever stuck your finger in a power outlet, you know how much energy electricity kicks. In these storm clouds, this electric charge builds and builds until it gets too powerful for its own good. The electric energy is suddenly released as a bolt of lightning. Ah! Maybe I should have just stayed home. Lightning escapes from the cloud and travels quickly toward the earth. Lightning is about as powerful as anything on this planet. A lightning bolt can carry up to a billion volts of electricity. 
the temperature of a lightning bolt is even hotter than the surface of the sun. So yeah, lightning is serious. When a bolt of lightning comes from a storm cloud, it releases so much energy that it creates a major sound wave. And which is why we hear powerful, rashing sounds of thunder. How about some natural disasters? I'm so ready for these. Tornadoes happen when warm, humid air crashes into cold, dry air. As warm air rises through the cold air above it, sometimes it can create a swirling air current. If this reaction is powerful enough, it creates a fast-moving funnel cloud results. Like this! Hurricanes, or tropical cyclones, form over the ocean in areas where the water is warm, mostly in the areas close to the Earth's equator. When colder air comes in and replaces the warm air that rises from the ocean, strong winds and storms result. Like this! Blizzards are strong snowstorms with powerful wind blowing. Here we go. Droughts occur when hot temperatures cause even the moisture to evaporate from the soil, making it harder for plants to grow. There are just a few of the disasters that can have a major long-term consequences on both physical and human geography. Now, Let's turn to talking about climate just a bit more. As mentioned, climatology takes a much longer term view of the weather, usually in periods of 30 years or more. Climatology isn't concerned with a single storm or a single warm day. Climatology looks at how climates are created and what they do to environments around the world. Again, the word climatology come from Greek. It uses the word klima, which refers to the region or zone. This is important for reasons we will get to in just a minute. In climatology, they look at a lot of the same variables we just talked about in meteorology. Temperature, air pressure, wind, precipitation. The difference is that it looks at what specific places on the earth can expect in terms of those things over a long period of time. Honestly, I'm just glad the weather part is over. These places are determined by climatology's own set of four factors, latitude, terrain, altitude, and closeness to bodies of water. Latitude refers to location on the earth, specifically where the location is between the north and south poles. Oops, seriously? Locations too? From north to south, the Earth is measured by latitude lines. The far northern and southern points are called the North and South Poles. Because of the way the Earth is tilted, these points are always further from the sun, and the temperature in these areas is usually lowest. The center of the Earth is called the equator. It's much warmer here. The equator is always closest to the sun, and therefore, this region is almost always warmer. Between the equator and the North Pole, or the South Pole, there are 90 degrees measured out in latitude line. A place's latitude is a key part of telling us their climate. There are certain latitudes where certain types of weather can likely occur, but others are not. For instance, hurricanes are almost always in the tropics. Those latitudes are areas closest to the equator because they require warmer water. Terrain refers to features of the land. What kind of land is it? Something on a mountainside, a valley, a flat plain? Terrain will impact both weather and climate. Certain types of terrain can expect certain types of weather. For example, the area of the Great Plains of the central United States end up having more tornadoes than anywhere else on Earth. This is because of both latitude and terrain. It is at the perfect, or maybe the worst possible, latitude 
because it's about halfway in between where the warmer air near the equator meets the cooler air of the northern areas closer to the poles. And the terrain is flat, and it is easy for tornadoes to start because mountains and hills don't get in the way. Altitude is the next factor that helps determine climate. Altitude refers to how high a place is above sea level. Based on the geomorphology of the land, some areas are naturally higher above the sea, like mountains. In these areas, the weather patterns are different because altitude has a direct impact on things like air pressure. Because heavier air molecules go down, there is less air pressure, which impacts the types of weather patterns and climate you might find at higher altitudes. Finally, how close the land is to the sea or other large bodies of water also has a large impact on the climate and weather in an area. This is because water heats and cools more slowly than land does, so the temperatures don't change as much close to water. Winters usually stay warmer and summers usually stay cooler in areas closer to large bodies of water and oceans. So, now we have a little bit better picture of both meteorology and climatology. Understanding how water and air works on the earth, both by looking at meteorology in the short term and climatology in the long term, will tell us so much about the physical geography of the world. I could stay here for a while. Thanks so much for coming by here at Engage Global Storytelling. I'm Jenny. Here at Engage, our mission is global awareness and global engagement. We're a nonprofit that focuses on making videos, educational products, and other tools to help increase an awareness of the world around us. So stay tuned to see what else you can learn about how we're all connected.